Daydreaming About Dragons, episode 57. I want to talk about gaming in the context of sometimes it's a good idea to not game. All right. This came up this past Saturday night. Uh, I was on Instagram watching friends in New York City, watching friends all over the world, uh, marching for justice, for Black Lives Matter, uh, and wishing I could be there with them, feeling lots of feelings. And then I got on, you know, I went and gamed. And it was probably a mistake. Probably a mistake. And it reminded me of times that there have definitely been many times in my life, not as dramatic and as historic as, as this time, when we had to call it. We had to say, hey, let's, let's not do this today. Let's, let's hang out. Let's have a drink. Let's share a meal. Let's play a board game. Let's sit and talk. Let's, let's just not do this. And yeah, this was definitely one of those times. I was, I was, I was definitely feeling it. Um, and I wanted to talk about that and, and how to deal with that and how to set those expectations. And maybe that's something, this isn't anything I've done, but maybe that's something we should do when we set up the game group. You know, is that an idea, you know, to say, hey, folks, um, you know, if we if you can't make it because of an emergency, you know, just say so. If you're just having a, you know, if you're having a rough day, you know, here are different things you can say based on the different types of rough day you're having. And is that a way you can is that a thing you can do when you're setting up the group? Uh, I've never done that, but I'm just thinking about it. Uh, especially now when we're in isolation and the media is relentless in, in, in showing just terrible things. And there's a grind. And I think we need a shorthand. And we need things in place with our, with, even with our friends so that we can tell them in a short, easy way. Hey, I, I can't do this today. Uh, or, or this isn't the right thing to do. And it's a weird thing because sometimes when I'm feeling this kind of stress, uh, I need to just take a break. I need to stop. And other times when I'm under stress, the game is just the thing, right? It's just the perfect game at the perfect moment. And it was just the distraction I needed. And it's hard to know which is which. And, and all the more reason, I think, to develop a vocabulary amongst ourselves, amongst our friends, to, and in our hobby. You know, just like safety tools, uh, you know, self-preservation tools, mental health tools. So that when we can't make it, our friends maybe have an idea of when to say, uh, maybe, this, maybe you should. You know, come on, let's do it. It'll be fun. If you want to stop, you can. And when they, you know, so that they know when to say, oh, nope, this is a, this is a no-go day. We, they, they said the, they said the password, you know, and I don't know. I think there's, there's something to that. And there are times when I haven't wanted to go out and it was a good idea to go out or a good idea to get together. And there are other times when it's just a no-go. Uh, and I think I pushed myself into it uh, in a past game, and I'm not sure it was the right thing. And interesting thing is afterwards, I was kind of frustrated, and I kind of blamed the game. I got pissed. Uh, who was I pissed at? I don't knew I wasn't pissed at the other players. I really like the other players. I adore them. So what was I, who was I pissed at? I don't know. But I went, I went after the game. And... Uh, I don't know. It t- took me a couple of days to kind of sort out my, my stuff, sort out my feelings and go back to the players and say, you know, to go back to my friends and say, hey, you know, I'm sorry I kind of lashed out at this game. I like the game. I just had a bad night with it. And it's a good idea. Good idea to kind of self-reflect, take a day, you know. 
I know there's a lot of folks who like to do uh, roses and thorns right after a game. Um, and so, but the reason why I don't particularly like roses and thorns, but I do like them and why I use them in other games, in, in lots of games I play, is that, and if you don't know what roses and thorns are, it's a way to reflect on the game. Hey, these are the things I really liked about the game. These are the things that I could do better. Other people call it highlights and hopes, right? These are things that I loved about the game. These are things I'm hoping for next time. So that way, if, if something didn't go right, you can kind of phrase it as a hope for the future, right? That's a nice way to do it too. So one of the things I don't like about doing post-game highlights and hopes is that it takes, sometimes it takes me a couple of days to digest the game. Right? Hence the daydreaming. Hence the dragons. So if we do highlights and hopes right after the game, you'll get kind of a superficial thing. But, you know, two, three days later, when I've kind of been able to marinate, that's when the game really strikes true for me. So anyway, back to self-care, back to tapping out, right? It's a thing in jiu-jitsu and submission wrestling where someone gets you in a bad position, you're about to get hurt, you tap out, they let you go. No questions asked. They just let you go. And I think I, I've, I've used that terminology in conversations, right? I'm tapping out of this conversation. I want nothing to do with it. And it's a good way to let someone know, like, hey, this hurts. And sometimes we should tap out of the game. Not because the game is hurting us, although maybe the game is hurting us. And maybe that's something to talk about. I think that's a different topic. I think that's definitely a different topic. But... You know, tapping out of the, the, the endeavor, tapping out of the effort, you know, tapping out of the get-together. Um, my first experience with this was with a friend of mine in college who, uh, he was a bit older than me, and on a night of a game, his divorce became final. And he, he came to the game and said, yeah, I just got the paperwork. And I said, we're not gaming today. We're going to go and have a drink. And we did. And he said, you know what, Judd, that was a really good idea. I'm glad we didn't game that day. I'm glad we just got together as buddies. And that's important. It's important to be able to do that sometimes. Uh, but I wish I'd had the vocabulary to say, hey, do you need the game or do you just need to be around people in a non-gaming way? Right? So in a way, I wish... So at that point, I, I kind of tried to be a good friend by you know, saying what I thought he needed. But... I wish I'd had the vocabulary and the things in place to say, okay, where are we on the scale here? You know, are we on a, I need a game night tonight? I need kind of a fun distraction. Or are we in the, I need to be around people. I'd like it to be you people, but I don't want to be playing pretend tonight. And I, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. Things to develop, things to think about, you know, as we do this thing, as we do anything. You know, this could be vocabulary that you'd use, you know, with your gym buddy, with your running buddy, with your bandmates. But, you know, like those folks, there's another thing that can happen with games is, is inertia. And that's always my worry, right? Oh, I'm going to, if I cancel tonight, I'm going to kill the inertia and I'm going to kill the game. And that's my worry. That's like this thing that keeps me from doing it. The little goblin voice. Hate that goblin voice. So anyway, I think, you know, again, with, with things in place and a language and a vocabulary in place for this, I think we can move towards not worrying about inertia so much because we know we've communicated better about why this is happening. So that is what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about the real world and how all this comes together. So here we are. And I hope you're well. And let's get to Inspiration Goat. All right? Good one, Inspiration Goat. And so we had one for uh, trailers, right, and intros. So now I want to do one just on book covers. I've been having a lot of fun doing this in gaming lately, making book covers for campaigns. So much fun. I'm digging it so much. Loving it. 
I've got a blog post in attached to the show notes where it just has a bunch of book covers I made for dungeons I've run for uh, Trophy Gold. And so it's like different arcs in Trophy Gold and different, uh, you know, campaigns I'm in here and there. And what I like about making book covers is I, I love learning new things, but I really need a project to learn it, right? I don't want to just sit down and try to learn, you know, uh, affinity, which is a, a, an art suite, an art program suite. So having little projects to work on helps me immensely. And I really love that. And making little book covers, for, little book covers. See, I'm belittling it. Making book covers for my games is a way to help. Uh, I, I've, I make them in Affinity now. I used to make them mostly in Canva.com, which is another fun program if you want to kind of tinker with uh, layout, but you're not really sure. So check out Canva.com. And it's a fun, fun, fun program. There, there's a pro version, but there's a, pre version, a free version. There's a link in the show notes with a blog post with a bunch of my book covers. They'll all be there. Fun times. Uh, let me know what you think. And give it a shot. Just make a book cover for your game. So much fun. You know, there's so much free art out there. There's so much, uh, you know, art with no copyright restrictions and easy to use. Super easy to use. Um, so check it out. Have fun. Make something for your game. It's cool to... Uh, I also have a link to uh, uh, something I made, uh, a piece of art I altered for an Aegon game, right? And so if this go, harkens back to having artifacts of play, right? These these things are they, they're not they're not you can't hold them unless you print them out. But having digital artifacts is a lot of fun. It's something to look back on and helps you remember. Oh, I remember this game. This was fun. This was really fun. So. Yeah, definitely check that out uh, and let me know what you do. What do you do to commemorate your games, to celebrate them? You know, because that's what, that's what this is, kind of. Making book covers is kind of a controlled daydream, right? It's, it's you know, practicing art, practicing layout, practicing whatever, and daydreaming about this wonderful thing we do and I love doing it and it also has me looking at fonts looking at book covers in a really fun critical way because I'm like oh I wonder how they did that Ooh, I, they, wow they used two different fonts here that's crazy I never would have thought to do that so that's really fun so check that out uh, and, and you know look at the book covers look at your favorite book covers emulate them you know and rip them off. Try to recreate them using different pieces of different things. So make book covers for your games. And share them with your players. It's fun. Super fun. Let me know what art you make for your games. What do you do? Do you write fan fiction? Do you make recipes? There's all kinds of cool stuff people are sharing nowadays. So let me know. I'd love to hear about it. And let's get to the outro. Whoop. Screech. Rewind. Make a rewind. Editor. Uh, put in the rewind uh, sound effect. No, I'm just kidding. I don't have an editor. Uh, <laughs> I forgot a really fun part about making book covers for your campaign games. And that is making fake quotes from your favorite authors about what they think about the, the goings on in your games. That's super fun. And uh, so I, I, I put something like, oh, my God, he ripped me off. That's from that's from one of my books, uh, you know, China Mayville, uh, because I totally ripped off one of his monsters in a game. So it's a nice way to, you know, pay homage in a funny way to the people who, you know, whose work you're kind of pillaging to make a cool game. And you can also the back cover blurb is such a fun way to describe a game. And it has uh, a structure that we all know. So the other fun, really fun part is making a little front cover blurb, a, a little back, a big back cover blurb. It's a fun way to describe the game and what's going on. You can kind of celebrate cool things that happened. Definitely give it a shot. 
Uh, if you make anything like that, let me know. And if you want to see my, my examples, a few of my examples, please check out the blog post uh, that'll say, you know, book cover blog post uh, in the show notes. Great. All right. Now let's get to Inspiration Goat. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, usually in my outros, I talk about how to support the show. I'm not going to do that this time. If there was money you were thinking about putting towards the show, I will have some charities and links that I think are worthwhile. Uh, Right now, there's just so much going on, and I'm trying to think about how I can, how I can help, and how I can go from being, uh, you know, thinking of myself as an ally to earning the title of accomplice, and making Black Lives Matter not something controversial to say. Uh, it just, I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure how to do that, and I'm working on it. And it felt like a time for the past few weeks to just stay quiet and listen. And so I did not hit the publish button. So I'm not sure that time is over. Uh, I'm still listening and I'm still learning and I'm still working on it. And, uh, you know, yeah, that's it. I don't, it, it felt like, because this is a one person show, it, 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 it's very focused on me and it just felt like a time not to be focused on me so that's why I was quiet for a while I've got a couple shows in the hopper they're ready to go if you were going to support the show at all I appreciate it uh, there are some charities I'll have links to please support those uh, what little money I do pull in um, I will continue putting money towards creators that I support on Patreon but I will be putting the money towards the show, towards, towards some of these charities. So uh, please support them with me. And thank you so much for listening, and I will talk to you all soon. All right? Let me know how your games are going. Please contact me. Uh, you can do that through email, uh, judd.karlman at gmail.com, or you can do it on Twitter. My, my Twitter handle, Judd of Cryos, is in the show notes too. So check that out. Thanks for listening. There's another show coming very soon. So I'm putting this out on Tuesday and the next show will be out on Sunday. So it is set and ready and revved to go. And we might get a reply show somewhere in the middle there. We'll, we'll see how it goes. All right. Thank you so much for listening. Be well, be safe. We'll talk to you soon.